We've, uh, welcome to video two. So we've just stabilized our footage, so hopefully you've all managed to kind of find your way through that one. So now what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of this um, Nadir sort of gubbins here. Okay, so what I'm going to do then is I'm now going to add a 2D edit this time. So making sure that now my uh, VR conversion is, um, so what I've done is come to output render, so now my VR conversion is attached and I'm now going to add a 2D edit here. Okay, so same sort of thing, 1920, da da da. Okay, so now you can see we've got a 3D edit, which was the first one we did for our stabilization. Now we've got a 2D edit, and this is what we're going to use to get rid of our tripod. Okay, so in... Uh, <coughs> In our edit view, if you hold down C, remember, you can then uh, move your footage around like so. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my footage until I can see both the tripod base and the shadow. And I've put some bottles here as well to sort of replicate, you know, maybe battery packs or microphones or whatever you might need to patch out. OK, then what we're going to do is very, very simple. Um, we've probably done it before. Um, and it's it's you know based around a sort of something we've definitely looked at, which is the clone stamp tool. So up here we've got our clone stamp tool. Okay, uh, so unlike in Photoshop where you just cl click and work, um, in After Effects what you have to do, and this is where some people get unstuck because they're going to get cross with it because it's not working. What you have to do is just remember to double click first of all, and then it puts you into a, a mode where you can now use your clone snap tool to edit this footage. Okay, The problem with this is that then you can't go back and make changes because then that clone stamp will move to somewhere else in your footage, as you will see. So we'll come on to that in a minute. For now, what we're going to do is we're just going to use our clone stamp tool. And if you can't remember how to do that, here's your, your brush. Okay, So you can go over here into paint and then you've got, uh, sorry, into brushes. And then you can select the size of your brush. So I've got like a 65 here, um, hardness at zero. Make sure you get one with a, with a soft edge rather than a hard edge. It doesn't really matter, but it just makes it a bit easier. Okay. And then what you're going to do is you're going to come over to your footage here and holding down the option key on your uh, Mac, or it might be the alt key if you're on a uh, Windows PC. What you're going to do is hold down that key and then you get this target and you click once with your mouse like so. And that's now saying, right, that footage there, that's the bit that I want to sample. And I'm going to move that over here. And then I just start painting in. And can you see this little, there's a little plus uh, symbol uh, above the circle that's saying, this is what I'm sampling now. And this is what I'm replacing that little bit of uh, footage with. OK, so you don't want to keep holding it down because then eventually it will get down to where the tripod was originally and that will just appear over here somewhere. OK, so it's better to work in sort of short stabby little bits. And what I tend to find as well is rather than sampling from just one area, because then you get this area of right repetition, I'm going to grab little bits from around that might make it sort of easier to sort of see. So I'm going to grab that bit and I'm just going to patch that bit out. No little stabs. That's it. There you go. And then a little bit more from here, that sort of thing. OK. And now what I'm going to do is, can you see how, so in Photoshop, you would just, just sort of do it and just paint it out. But because this is a 360 um, clip, we tend to find there's a bit more distortion over here than there is here. So I'm just going to keep sampling bits as I go along and just like so. You can see this grass is a different color. So I'm just going to sample that. I'm going to just click to the side like so. That's it. Take it up to the white line. And then I'm going to make sure that I'm not going to um, muck about with my white line by just sampling the white line itself. Now I'm going to sample that bit. And I'm going to just mask that out like so. And I'm going to just sample this here just to make sure that I'm getting enough differentiation so it doesn't look like uh, it's all been kind of just copied out. OK, and there we go. So now we can see that our um, our tripod has been masked out reasonably well. If I want to go into detail, I can just sort of get rid of some of these slightly more, slightly softer bits where it's not really worked properly. Nobody's really going to be looking for that, though, to be honest. So, you know, I think we've done a reasonably good job there. OK, so the thing is now, if I hold down, um, if I go back into my composition now, everything looks fine. But if I now hold down C and move it, can you see what's happened? Like our... Well, it doesn't know which bit to sample, and so it's all gone wrong. OK, so I'm going to just undo that. So it's now back to there. OK, so what you've got to do now is go back to your output render file. And can you see how now that uh, echo rectangular is not showing the, uh, the tripod and it's not showing the shadow? And as we play it through, we can now see that this is, is OK. 
All right. So here's the, the interesting bit about After Effects, then I say interesting, is that um, I've now, um, there might be a better way. And if you're if you're really into sort of After Effects and you found this, then please do let me know um, if you found a way of doing this. But I haven't figured out a way yet of being able to now work within After Effects um, without having to render this out first so that it's got the stabilization information and the Nadir tracking in a kind of new clip. So that's what we're going to do. Okay, We're just going to render this out, re-import it, and then we can work on getting rid of that director. So we've stabilized our footage, we've got rid of the Nadir patch. Now what I'm going to do is just go to Composition and Add to Render Queue like so. Okay, And what you can do is you can go into uh, lossless over here and you can go into format options. Um, now, I mean, the options for Mac are kind of limited, certainly coming out of After Effects. Um, what I'd be tempted to do is probably because otherwise, it, it, um, if you output a clip like this in the animation format, which is lossless completely, it'll end up being about 15 gig probably. Um, so just to sort of try and make that a little bit more manageable, I'm going to output this for now in ProRes 422 high quality. Okay, um, we will ultimately, if we ended up using this as part of a composition, we'd want to kind of compress it down even further. Um, but for now, we want to try and keep uh, some of the detail because that's what we're going to be using later on. So I'm going to uh, go to Apple ProRes 42, like so. Uh, and I'm going to, that all looks fine. So I'm going to click OK. And then I'm going to go direct to VR output. I'm going to call this Stave and Patch. So I know it's been stabilized and patched. Okay, and I'll save that to my desktop for now. And then I'm just going to render that out. Okay. So I won't keep this video running while it's rendering. Uh, render your video out, and then um, you will. Uh, join me in the next video and we'll look at getting rid of this silly director who's been walking up and down and ruining the shot. All good?